everybody. My name is Stacy. I am here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and you're joining us today to explore the ocean to check out our friends in the sea. Now, the things that we're really going to be looking for today as scientists are um, colors and shapes. Now, in order for us to explore, we're going to be using our senses. Now, we actually have five senses, but we won't be using all five today. Now, the five senses that we have are hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and touching. But again, in our exploration here, looking at colors and shapes, we really want to look and listen to explore this world. Now, Again, we are going to be looking for those colors and shapes. So we'll be having a video very soon of a bunch of different animals. I want you to see what are the colors that you find and also what shapes are the animal parts. Okay, so looking for colors and shapes, let's start our exploration. <laughs> There were so many different animals, so many different colors. I even saw a bunch of different shapes. Now, uh, it's really neat to be able to explore everything you look at. You can look at for lots of different reasons. And of course, if you wanted to focus on colors and shapes, you can. Now, today during our exploration, if you have any questions, you can actually text us. Now, data rates may apply, so kiddos, make sure that you ask your parents for permission first. If you are interested in texting us, here's the board, 562-786-5181. All right, so again, that's 562-786-5181. And you can text us any questions that you might have, and I might be able to answer them for you right here on our program. All right, so the first thing that we're really gonna be investigating are colors. Now, hopefully you got to see your favorite color in the video that we just watched. I know that I did. So we're going to investigate some different colors that you might find in the ocean. Now, of course, in order to do this, we should be playing a game. We don't wanna just look at colors, we wanna play with colors. So I'm going to have a picture that's going to be hidden and I'll only show you a few little parts of that picture and it's our job to look and try to figure out what it might be. We're going to look for clues that'll tell us what animal that picture might be. Now, again, these are all ocean animals, so hopefully that will also give you a really good clue. All right, everybody, let's start looking at color by looking at my favorite color, blue. All right, so blue, B-L-U-E, the color blue. Let's take a look at our puzzle. I don't even see any blue. Oh, there's blue. Ooh, very cool. So we don't get the whole picture. We're missing two little boxes, but we can see some blue right there. Now, of course, there's a couple other colors too. There's 
black. And what's that color? I think you know. Go ahead and say it out loud. It's yellow. That's right. So we have an animal that is blue, black, and yellow. Hmm. Now again, we're looking for clues that tells us what kind of animal this is. So we saw the color, maybe other things. Do you recognize any parts like this right here, this triangle? That looks like maybe a tail. All right, if you think you know what it is, I bet you you're right. Let's take a look at the rest of the picture. All right, there we go, excellent. Now this, of course, is a fish. In fact, it's a pretty popular fish. Some of you may have seen it in cartoons. Uh, this is called a blue palette tang. And a blue palette tang is a really, really cool fish. Not only is it really bright, but it also has a really neat way to defend itself. So if it uh, is nervous or scared, it actually has right here a little spine that can kind of pop out a little bit, and that way it has protection. So that's one of the reasons why its tail is this real pretty bright yellow color. It's a warning. It says, beware, I have a spine. All right, very cool. So that's a really neat blue animal. And I bet you, you can even think of other things that are blue, not only just animals, but other things that you might see um, like the sky or even the ocean. Oh, I have a really good question that just came through. How much do otters weigh? And uh, the, it, it kind of depends on the otter, but it's about 60 pounds. All right, so um, that is our sea otter. Now, if you are wondering how you can text questions, here is my number again. It's 562-786-5181. And uh, if you haven't heard it already, uh, data rates may apply. And also, kiddos, make sure that you get your parents' permission before you text in. All right, thank you so much for that question. Now we know a little bit more about otters. Wait a minute, what color are otters? sea otters. I'd say they're brown. All right, let's take a look at another color. How about red? Now red, R-E-D. I bet you there's lots of animals that are red. Mm, this is a hard one. Do you see the red? I can see red. There's some red way over there. And there's some red right over here. But what is this animal? What could it be? Let's see, I see some dark colors right here. Hmm, we know that it's red. What is an animal that lives in the ocean that's red? I know maybe if we look around it, it'll give us some clues. Is this in the middle of the water swimming? I don't see, I don't see any clues that tell us that. To me, it looks like this animal is resting on the ocean floor. So it must be something that lives on the ocean floor. Do you see any fins for swimming? Hmm, I don't see any fins either. What could this animal be? Our red animal friend? Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, that makes it so much easier when we have the whole picture. Boys and girls, everybody, this here is a crab. Now, uh, this crabby friend here is really, really fun. Uh, they like to crawl around on the ocean floor, and of course, they will even eat some of the things that they find. Now, right here is where the crab's mouth is, and they are not the cleanest eaters ever. In fact, crabs are probably one of the messiest eaters. They kind of eat their food and it gets all over the place. And uh, it's great because it gives other animals a chance to get some of their leftovers. Now that's a really good question. We got a question, what do crabs eat? Most crabs are scavengers. What that means is they crawl around on the ocean floor looking for anything that they can find. And when they find um, maybe somebody else's leftovers, that's what they'll eat and rip it into smaller bits 
for smaller animals to get to? So very, very good question. Now, I also have a question. How do you become a marine biologist? That's a really good question. Um, now, one of the things that I did to become a marine, a marine biologist is I went to school to learn a lot. And of course, I love watching nature shows. I love reading books and um, really good web pages that tell me a little bit more about marine biology. And then I was really lucky and I was able to get a job here at the Aquarium of the Pacific to help me learn more and even to help me learn how to teach other people about marine biology. And that's one of my favorite things. So um, if you're really interested in becoming a marine biologist, the best things to do is to get involved in maybe your local aquarium or um, or anything that has to do with the ocean and also go to school to learn a little bit more about marine biology and figure out what part of it you're really interested in. It's a really big field. Uh, so uh, doing some investigations are important. Okay, now let's get back to our color exploration. My friends, let's take a look at orange. Oh, there's some orange. I have a feeling you may know what kind of animal this is. Now, again, we're looking for those clues. We see the orange, whoop, there it is, orange fish. And there's some white and there's some black. Well, I said fish. So I already gave you a clue there. How did I know it was a fish? It's probably the same way you knew it was a fish. If you look really carefully, oh, there it is. There's some fins. Okay, I have a feeling you know what fish this is. Let's show the rest of our puzzle. Woohoo! excellent. So this is another very popular fish. It is a clownfish. And you know what's really cool about clownfish is where they live. They live in an animal. So they call an animal home, and that animal's called a sea anemone. Now, if you look very closely in the picture here, um, you'll notice all the little lines that are all over the place. All those little lines are the tentacles of the sea anemone. And those tentacles protect the anemones, and they also protect those fish because they sting. So if another little fish comes by and tries to get a clownfish, they get stung by the anemone. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, a clownfish is a fish. How come it doesn't get stung? Well, the really cool thing about clownfish is that they have this slime on the outside of them. It's mucus. Um, and that slime kind of matches their anemone. And so the anemone doesn't really sting them and the slime can protect them um, from any of those stings too. So if you were ever to look at clownfish inside of an exhibit, you might even notice they like to swim in and among all the tentacles of the anemone and that helps them to match their anemone friends. All right, very cool. So these are really neat orange animals. Uh, let's look at one more color. How about purple? Ooh, purple is definitely one of my favorite colors, too. Ooh, we have almost every single part of this picture except for two pieces. What could this be? Does it even look like an animal to you? It is, for sure. What does it look like? kind of weird. All right, let's get the other two pieces. Woohoo, this is really neat. This animal right here is called a purple sea urchin. Of course we can see that it's purple. What else do you see? Now if you're saying spikes, I agree with you. There are tons and tons of spikes on this little animal. In fact, it's just a little ball of spikes. And that's a really great way to protect themselves. If you were a fish in the ocean, would you eat this animal? No way, I don't wanna get spikes in my mouth. In fact, there aren't very many animals who can eat them. But you remember our sea otter friend that we mentioned earlier? They're really good 
at eating purple sea urchins. In fact, so good that some otters have purple teeth. It's kind of crazy, just like if you were to eat a popsicle or a lollipop and your mouth changes color. So these purple urchins here can make otter mouths purple. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, if it's an animal, it has to have a mouth, right? Well, its mouth is on the bottom. They like to eat seaweed. And as you can see here, it's actually sitting on a blade of kelp or seaweed and it's eating it by sitting on it because its mouth again is on the bottom and it's like, Yum, 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 yum. And just kind of tearing it up so it can eat it. So very, very cool um, animal, very unique looking, different than a lot of other animals that you think of when you think about animals. Now, uh, I have a, a friend in there, Brandon, who just texted us and asked, what do octopuses eat? And that's a really, really good question. Octopuses eat a lot of different things, but you know what their favorite thing is? It's the red animal that we just saw. It's crab. That's totally one of their favorite things to eat. Now we also feed our octopus um, clams too. So octopuses definitely like to eat things that are a little bit easier to catch. Um, things that maybe they would find on the bottom of the ocean because a lot of kinds of octopuses live on the bottom of the ocean. All right, that's a really, really good question. Thanks so much. And oh, I have another great question. Do urchins have eyes? That spiky purple ball friend, um, they don't have eyes, not the way that we have eyes. So they don't really get to see pictures of things around them. Instead, they use their other senses to help them navigate around the ocean. All right, great questions, everybody. Now, if you're wondering how you can send your own question in, just send us a text. It's a uh, 562 786-5181. All right, now earlier we said that not only are we gonna look at colors, but we're going to look at shapes. And in order for us to take a look at shapes, we're actually going to read a story or, or investigate a story together. And this story is about a really neat whale named Gracie. Now Gracie loves to swim in the ocean and she's gonna go swimming to try to find different animals. A really good way to find animals in the ocean is to listen for them. So Gracie's going to swim around in the ocean, listen really, really well, and see what she can find. And if we find any animals, we're going to try to find out what shapes we see. All right, now first off, Gracie is a gray whale. So let's get our story started. There's Gracie. Hi, Gracie. All right, so Gracie here, the gray whale, she can make sounds too. Now this sound that she's going to make doesn't sound like other animals in the ocean. All right, Gracie. Did you hear that? Okay, so Gracie is swimming, swimming, swimming. Does that sound like a whale to you? I think it sounds a little bit different than Gracie. Hmm, I wonder what she found. Oh! Oh my goodness, explorers, what is that? It's a jelly, that's right. Jellies are really interesting animals. In fact, um, they are a really interesting shape too. So let's take a, a look at a picture of a jelly. Now, uh, we are trying to figure out what shape this jelly is, and this jelly in particular is called a moon jelly. What shape do you see there? If you were to look at the whole body, what shape do you see? Now, I have a feeling you may know what it is. So let's go ahead and outline. What is that shape? It's a circle. That's right. C-I-R-C-L-E. Very nice. So these jellies are a circle shape and that's the whole body of it. The body of a jelly is also called a bell. All right. Now we have lots of jellies here at the Aquarium of the Pacific and um, we even have a lot of moon jellies. So this moon jelly here is floating around. They're not the best swimmers. All right. So they just kind of float around a whole bunch. 
Now, we have jellies at the aquarium. This is one of our live webcams. We have cameras in many of the exhibits here, uh, a handful of the exhibits here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, so you can actually peek in and see what the animals are up to. You can do this whenever you want just by going to our website, aquariumofpacific.org, and um, clicking on our webcams. Now, these are our nettles, so it's a kind of jelly. Do you see the circle shape? Other really cool thing to look at is how they move. So they do swim a little bit, but the water moving around them is really what pushes them around. Now, if you were a jelly, how would you move? Everybody pretend to be a jelly. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right, very cool. So those are our circle jellies. And it looks like we have a few questions here. Do jellies have a mouth? That's a really great question. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Um, but it doesn't look like our mouths. Now, everybody smile. That's our mouth, right? When we smile, we make our mouth kind of change shapes. Jellies don't really do that. Instead, right in the very middle. Oh, this jelly's right there that's where the jelly's mouth would be. That's where the food would go. Now, if you're wondering what jellies eat, it really depends on the kind of jelly. But a lot of jellies eat whatever they're able to catch. So um, the moon jellies that we have here at the aquarium eat really small plankton. So they're teeny tiny where they're hard to see. And um, it floats around in the water and they can sting it with their tentacles. And then they bring it in and then they eat it using the mouth again on the bottom part of them in the center. Great question, thanks for that. Now, we also have a question from Grayson who asked, how do octopuses eat crabs? And that's also a really good question. I love that we're talking about eating. It's one of my favorite pastimes. Um, so crabs have a really hard shell, right? And if we were to bite them, it'd be really tough. In fact, you might even hurt your teeth a little. Octopuses' mouths are also called a beak. Now, if you think about bird beaks, they're pretty hard and tough, especially a beak like a parrot beak. And that's what an octopus's mouth is like. So they're really, really good at being able to catch food with their arms, bringing it to the middle on the bottom, and that's where their mouth or beak is, and they can bite it and, and then get to the meat on the inside. So that's a really, really good question. Now, I think there was also a question about urchins and um, how why urchins have no face? That's a really good question too. You know, there's a lot of animals out there that are just different than us. In fact, you can take a look at the jellies right now in our, in our um, live cam here and take a look at me. What are some of the things that are the same and what are the same, some of the things that are different? Not very many things are the same, huh? And it's an animal just like I am, but it's just kind of a different type of animal. In fact, jellies, I wouldn't really say they have a face either. So that's a really good question. Um, but not all animals have faces and they're still animals and they still get around and that's kind of what makes them really, really cool. All right, so um, next time you have a chance to look at animals, try to find out more about them just by looking at them, just like we're doing right now, being our exploration scientists. Okay, uh, one more question here. Jellies, do they have eyes? That's a good question. Jellies do have something kind of like eyes. I would say they're more like light sensors. So they know where it's bright and where it's dark. Um, and uh, that's basically it. So they're not going to be seeing images, pictures, movement, um, and shapes and stuff the way that we can see them. They're much simpler, more like a light sensor than actual eyes. All right, everyone, let's keep going on our journey. Let's join Gracie again to see if she can find another kind of animal. Let's listen. Hmm. I'm wondering what that is too, Gracie. Let's investigate. Oh my goodness. It's a shark. Now this shark right here must be going chomp, chomp, chomp. And that's why it's making that silly sound. Everybody take a look here. Let's try to figure out what shapes do you see 
in this shark. Hmm. Let's take a look at a, at a picture of a real shark here and try to figure out what shapes do you see a lot of. In fact, if I look at this shark here, I see a shape many, many times. You might be seeing that shape too. What is it? Maybe if we put an outline on those shapes, we can figure it out. All right, explorers, what do you see? If you're saying a triangle, yeah, that's what I see too. There are so many triangles when you look at sharks. They have lots and lots of fins all over their body that are triangles. And even some sharks have triangle teeth. In fact, I have one of those teeth right here. Take a look at this. This is a great white shark tooth and it's a triangle. So triangle fins, triangle teeth, they even kind of have a triangle nose. Look at that pointy nose. All right, very cool. Sharks are covered in triangles. Now let's see how they use their triangle fins when they're moving around in the water. Now I see some fish up close. Those are bony fish because those fish have bones, hard bones. Oh my goodness, there's even a sea turtle in there. Do you see the sea turtle? I'm covering it. It's going in the cave. Well, now we can see its tail. <laughs> but there are sharks in the back. Look at those really cool sharks. They're using their triangle fins to swim. Now, if you watch the tail, how is it moving? Is it going up and down? Or is it going side to side? It's going side to side, that's right. So our shark friends here have tails that are triangle shaped. They move side to side and that's what pushes them through the water so they can swim around. Great observations, everyone. Nice job exploring. Now there are some sharks that are endangered. Not all sharks are, but there's a lot of sharks out there in the ocean. So uh, we definitely want them to be in the ocean. They're a really important part of their habitat. They kind of keep things in balance. So we need sharks out there in the ocean uh, for sure. All right, my friends. Now that we've seen our cool triangle finned friends, the sharks, let's take a look at an, our last shape. All right, Gracie, let's go swimming. that it was kind of quiet do you think it was a whale mm, no it sounded a little bit different than Gracie what did she find it's a crab oh my goodness I feel like crab is a theme today so um, this is a crabby friend now wait what shape is the crab now we saw this crab a little bit earlier what shape do you see maybe take a look at its body Maybe if we outline it, that'll make it a lot easier. All right, my friends, it is an oval. All right, so the crab's body is an oval shape. An oval to me looks like somebody took a circle and sat on it and went boop. And that's how you get an oval. That's at least how I see them. All right, so there are lots and lots of crabs in the ocean. So many kinds of crabs, I can't even tell you how many. And a lot of those crabs have an oval shaped body with long skinny legs that they uh, walk around with. Now, some of them have short skinny legs that they walk around with, but again, still that oval shaped body to help them uh, do the things that crabs do. Now this crab here looks like it has some weird things on its shell. What is going on with that crab? Well, if you think about it, if you look like the ocean floor, that means you have a very good place to hide. So if you have things growing on you, maybe you can look like the ocean floor. That's what this crab looks like. You know, there's even a crab out there called a decorator crab, and they take little pieces of other animals and, um, and seaweed and shells and those sorts of things, and they put it on themselves, almost like clothes, and then they walk around, and that helps them to hide from things too. All right, uh, now I think there's a couple more questions here that we can answer before we finish up. I have a question here from Gus asking, do sharks have noses? 
That's a good question. Why don't we go back to our shark cam so we can take a look at our shark swimming again and see what we can find. Now we were saying the front of their face was pointy like a triangle, but do they have noses? Now, what do noses help us with? Noses help us with, hmm, with breathing. Also, if you wanted to smell, our noses are good for that. Now, sharks also need to breathe, but they get their oxygen, they breathe from the water. So they have those lines on the side of them, they're called gills, that help them get their oxygen from the water. Just like we get oxygen from the air when you breathe, <sighs> we get ours from the air. So we know that they don't have a nose for breathing. Instead, they just have a nose for smelling. Oh, there we go. Thanks, shark buddy. So right in the front, right where you would expect a shark nose to be, um, they have little nose holes that help them to smell in the water. Now, why would sharks need to smell? That might help them find some food. It might even help them figure out where they are because different parts of the ocean might even smell different from other parts of the ocean. So lots of different reasons, just like how we would smell things. All right, very cool. And then we have another question here asking about crabs. Again, crabs, the theme of our show. Um, why are their eyes far apart? Ooh, that's a real good question. Now for us, our eyes are on the front and that helps us see right in front of us. Sometimes that's a really good thing because we wanna know what's in front of us so we can go and get it, all right? And there's lots of animals that have their eyes on the front of their face like us. But crabs, as you can see here in this crab, it's kind of on the side, and they're also even pointing out a little bit. What do you think they can see? Well, they're not just looking in front of them. They can even see to the sides of them. Why would a shark, or excuse me, why would a crab need to be able to look on the sides of them? I would say it's in case an octopus is around or any other animal that might try to eat a crab because they don't want to get eaten. So if they have their eyes and they can see more around them, it's really good for them to be able to uh, stay safe and maybe try to get away from that area or hide. All right, my friends. Now, I think we are just finishing up. Do we have any last questions? Ooh, that's another good question, my friend Gus. Why do turtles have shells? Why do you think they have shells? What is a shell used for? They look really cool, that's for sure. I love turtle shells because they're real pretty. But the shells are also to protect them. So just like crabs have eyes on the side of their head to look around, oh, our turtle friend, oop, I blocked it. Our turtle friend's coming out. Again, just the tail. <laughs> but it has that shell to keep it nice and safe. It's a really hard shell, making it a tough thing to eat. All righty. Well, thank you all so much for exploring with me, scientists. I really uh, appreciate um, your participation today and all the questions that you had. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.